preachers of our God and King. Please stand. by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately took to cross over, tried to cross over to Macedonia, 
seemed convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we were supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira, Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what we said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is number 67, which can be found in your bulletin. The psalm will be read responsibly by full verse. Please join me at the bolder verses. <laughs> May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, for your sake and all from all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you dress the peoples with your and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth for the Greeks. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of you. <coughs> A reading from the Revelation to John. In the spirit, the angel carried me to away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city. For its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need for sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Please join in singing hymn number 398, <coughs> I Sing the Almighty Power of God, verses 1 and 2. <laughs> Oh, 
Keep my words. The word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Goodbyes are a guaranteed part of this life. People come and people go, expectedly and unexpectedly, when we want them to and when we don't. People are on the move, friends and neighbors and even our families. They can all seem to be in a state of flux. New jobs, tragedies, or even, perhaps the worst, that slow drifting apart. The connections that we once found so life-giving, that have made our lives so worth living for, have seemingly now fallen to the wayside. We can't recapture how good it once felt to share ourselves with those who shared themselves with us. In our world these days, it can seem like this is happening so rapidly, but also seemingly on a cosmic scale. I don't know about you, but it makes me feel out of sorts. Imagine then how the disciples would have received this message from the risen Jesus today. That he must go away. The joy that they've been enjoying this past month or so after Easter, it must have been ecstatic. Their friend and master not only did what he told them that he would do, 
that he'd go up to Jerusalem, that he would suffer and die and rise again. But by doing so, he also finally revealed what they had come to believe, that he was the Messiah, the Lord's promised one, the one who would restore Israel and fulfill everything that God had promised. But now, he tells them that he must leave. He has to say goodbye. He must return to his father. Later this week, on Thursday, we will celebrate Jesus' return to his father on the Feast of the Ascension. But the temptation for, dis for the disciples today must have been to want to keep him there with them. They had lost him once before. How could they let it happen again? But Jesus' words challenge the disciples. He says, if you loved me, you would rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. How can a departure, an indefinite departure among beloved friends, how can that be something to rejoice over? Jesus tells his apprentices that he leaves them. But afterwards, and only afterwards, will they be given gifts, parting gifts. He promises them his peace, and that the Father will send to them the paraclete, the comfort. Further, he says, for those who love Jesus, and keep his words, which is the word of his Father, then both he and the Father will come and dwell with them. Peace and God's presence. That's what Jesus promises. And really, these are all the same. They are all the Holy Spirit that will be sent, not next Sunday, but the following on Pentecost. Jesus' disciples are to rejoice that he is leaving because it means that then the Holy Spirit will come and that he will return. But in the meantime, it will be like he never left because he says the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. And even more significantly, the Holy Spirit shall bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Remember, the words which we hear from Jesus are not his own, but they are the Father's who sent him. The Holy Spirit helps us to remember Jesus' words, the Father's commandments, the Father's teaching, the Father's word. And the reward for keeping the Father's word is God abiding or dwelling with us. The Holy Spirit, who is God, reveals who God is as shown in Jesus and brings us closer to live life with God until the day when Christ returns. This belief about the Holy Spirit is crucial. We believe because of the work of the Holy Spirit. We love by the activity of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is our contact with the life-giving power of God. The Spirit is the source of our peace. It is the peace that Jesus gives to his disciples. Jesus tells them not to let their hearts be troubled nor afraid because he sends them his peace. 
his spirit of peace. His departure, then, is no such thing. The gift of the Holy Spirit grants us access to God in this life. It's our greatest treasure, the greatest treasure of the church, because all of our other treasures spring out of it. Jesus departs from his friends, not to leave them alone or abandon them, but to share with them an even more intimate friendship that then can be shared by all, and that transcends both time and space. I said that the greatest treasure of God's people is the Spirit, because it makes this intimate fellowship possible. The gift of the Spirit, which Jesus promises today, will dwell with us, God's people, forever. <laughs> By baptism, we begin our life in the Spirit. And we're strengthened in it again at our confirmations. These allow us to participate in the abundant life God envisions for us. Jesus says today that he tells his friends these things about the Spirit's arrival in order for them to believe. So too with the sermon. God wants the whole entirety of our lives to be animated with the Spirit, to live and to breathe by it, to let everything that we do, every decision, every relationship, every prayer, be guided by it. When the Spirit is at the helm, when we discern what it prompts us to do, we have to listen. It is the voice of Jesus, who is the voice of his Father. When we do so, we will find the Spirit radically transforming us to be the people who God envisions us to be. In his epistle to the Galatians, St. Paul helps us to identify what he calls the fruits of the Spirit. These are those things in our lives which, when we find them present, we know that we have been letting the Holy Spirit guide us. They're more or less a metric for measuring whether we are letting God lead in our lives. St. Paul says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. In Scripture, however, we also find word about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And these seem to be different than the fruit. Where the Spirit's fruit are more like things that more or less happen to us by the Holy Spirit working in us. The Spirit's seven gifts are more like tools given to us at baptism and which we use to grow in love toward God and our neighbor. The seven gifts of the Spirit are wisdom, understanding, counsel, ghostly strength, knowledge, and holy fear. The Spirit's gifts and its fruit, along with virtues like faith, hope, and love, justice, courage, temperance, and prudence, these are all the ways God molds us into being holy, like how he is holy. These things are instruments into making us like Jesus, so that when he returns, we are ready to meet him. Jesus' departure, which he discusses today, is a promise, a promise to his disciples 
and to us. And it's a promise, perhaps, that we could not have expected. Like the cross, what we thought would mean abandonment and loneliness is actually the way God is going to draw his children closer to him. The Holy Spirit, which will be sent after Jesus ascends to the Father, is God's comfort. Because it is God dwelling in us. It is the love of God spread abroad in our hearts. And it is our calling to hand over the reins and let it do its work. <coughs> now, that's something which, more often than not, our fear or our need for security and control keep it from doing. Our challenge then, as it always is, is to take Jesus' words from the Garden of Gethsemane on our lips. Let your will be done, Lord, and not my own. What then is the Holy Spirit calling you toward? What is God's will for you? How will you go deeper? Disciples today trouble you, change you, transform you. What does God envision for you in the abundant life he has already prepared for you? <coughs> Come Holy Spirit, shine your light on our hearts. Show us the vision of God's will for us we will rejoice at your arrival. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of our Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made in man. For our sake, he was crucified and punished by the pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge us the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Through the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for the truth, live together in your love, 
and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael and our Bishop Daniel. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the South Fork Deanery, the Liturgical Commission, and Sam Portolomi, Diocese of Guatemala. Risen Lord, justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for our President Joseph and his cabinet and staff, for Congress, for Tom, our governor, and for all our elected officials. Risen Lord, Hear our prayer. prayer. Give us a reverence for the earth as your creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Risen Lord, Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for those awaiting the birth of a child and for those celebrating birthdays this week. We pray for those serving in the military, firefighters, the police force, and health workers, especially Chris, Josh, Matthew, Keith, Jack, Joe, Jason, Ryan, George, Jared, Andrew, and Ronan. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for those entrusted to our prayers. Kenya, Dan, Kelly, Wendy, Judy, Nate and April, Brian, Michael, Brooke, Anthony, James, Greg, Richard, Billy, Ryan, Fred, Dell, Kyle, Robin, Matt, Ina, Lisa, Kathleen, Tony, and Bill, and those you name either silently or loudly. Sure. 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 <laughs> Risen Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that you will for them be fulfilled. And we pray that you may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for those you name, either silently or loud. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <laughs> Hey, Laura, peace be with you. Peace be with you, everybody. Dennis, peace. All right, brother. Peace. Blue now. All right. Announcements. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Dana. <laughs> Dana asked me to remind you, number one, there will be a flea market on Saturday from 8 to 1. So please come out. And also, not to forget, the Designer Bag Bingo is going to be <coughs> June 18th. And if you need tickets, see me after church. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Um, I've got a couple things this week I want to draw your attention to, actually, at the back of our bulletin. Um, we're going to be starting a, a Bible study 
beginning uh, Thursday, which is also Ascension Day. You can come to the Bible study at 11 and hopefully uh, stick around. We're going to be celebrating a simple Eucharist, um, celebrating our Lord's Ascension uh, at noon. Eucharist at noon, Bible study at 11. We're going to be going through the Epistle to the Hebrews, which uh, I thought, you know, everyone always gets stuck in Romans and they stay there for years and years and years. And so it's probably... You know, good to mix it up a little bit. Uh, Hebrews is a personal favorite book of mine. So uh, I hope you can join us. I hope um, this is going to be a, a regular feature with our, our time together. So um, bring your Bibles and a notepad and a pen. And I uh, hope you can join us. Um, again, Bible study 11 here. We'll probably be in the parish hall for that. Um, and then Holy Eucharist for our Lord's Ascension uh, at noon to follow. Anything else? For the good of the work. Right. Very good. Okay, please join in singing hymn number 537, Christ for the World We Sing. resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise him, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, Lord God, Lord God, Lord God, Lord God, Lord God, and heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we fall into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. If you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Calling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also. We may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask from your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
particles. The body 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 Christ, the cup of salvation. The bottomless. The bottomless. The Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The bottomless. The Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Amen. The Christ, the bottom of salvation. Please join in singing hymn number 518. Christ is made the sure foundation.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the living members of our Son, the Savior of Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 506, Praise the Spirit in Creation.